Hello, everyone. Then, yeah, sorry. One second. Hello, everyone. I'm Gal Sagi from Huawei European Research Center. Uh, with me presenting, Tony, want to right. introduce yourself? No, it's fine. I'll and, uh, <laughs> and Muhammad. Uh, we are going to present to you Project Career. Uh, just a quick survey before we start. Anyone heard about Project Career before? OK, so relatively good number. Um, I'm going to do a quick uh, introduction to the new people here. And then Tony and uh, Muhammad are going to introduce uh, some of the exciting features we have uh, for this uh, release, uh, Kubernetes integration, the integration with uh, Docker Swarm, and attaching to existing networks. Before uh, I'm going to delve into career, um, what led us to start this project? We noticed that there is this new workload that people and users are deploying uh, next to OpenStack. We have OpenStack, uh, networking, and VMs, and on the other side, we see users starting to deploy containers, orchestration engines like uh, Kubernetes, Mesos, and uh, Docker. And in these engines, they have this, their own networking abstraction, their own new networking abstractions like uh, libnetwork for Docker, like uh, CNI for Kubernetes. And uh, when you look at, at this networking abstraction, you see that they are still experimental. They are still evolving, they are less mature uh, than what we have uh, in Neutron in terms of their features, and we know that it takes time to build a good networking abstraction that is generic and flexible enough. We also saw a lot of uh, vendor-specific solutions just targeting these new environments, um, and again, they are less uh, feature-rich than what we have in Neutron, and it's very hard to keep track on uh, APIs and on networking abstraction that are constantly changing. Another uh, problem that we see in this environment, and I'll touch it uh, in a few seconds, is what we call the double overlay problem. A uh, very common deployment is uh, when you want to achieve tenant isolation uh, for your containers, you are running them nested inside VMs, inside tenant VMs. Uh, and as I will soon show, these environments tend to be very, very complex uh, and provide us a big uh, penalty and overhead that are not needed. We also want to, with Project Career, we also want to enhance uh, our containers environments and our containers uh, workloads with, um, with policy level construct that uh, exist in OpenStack today, like security, like uh, isolation and advanced networking services. In general, what we saw is that it's pretty hard and complex to connect VMs, nested containers, bare metal, and everything in one networking infrastructure together. And then we looked at these new abstractions uh, like uh, libnetwork, and we compared it to Neutron and what we have right now in OpenStack, and it has a similar concept. Right, networking is evolving, we are, um, things are changing, but still in a high level look, uh, things are pretty uh, similar to what we have. This, uh, uh, this slide shows you the problem that uh, I talked previously about, the double overlay problem. Usually, uh, when we want tenant isolation, we uh, deploy containers inside VMs. This is Project Magnum, uh, for anyone that is familiar with. Uh, and in this environment, we have one, usually have one networking infrastructure connecting uh, the VMs, usually a Neutron plugin of some sort. And then we have a whole different uh, networking solution inside the VM itself to connect the containers, uh, like uh, Flanel, for example, with Kubernetes. Uh, and this deployment, uh, brings many, many complications. It brings, of course, the performance uh, penalty and the latency penalty of all these layers, but this can be avoided, like someone mentioned a few days ago with the Flanel host mode and so on. This is not the main problem in my eyes. The main problem is that we now have two different solutions, two different networking infrastructure, just to connect two containers in our environment. And this brings, and you know, ping is working, right? But when you come to think about how we orchestrate this, how we deploy this, how we manage these environments, how we debug and monitor, 
anyone that is debugging a virtualized network today knows that it's hard enough with one solution. And now we have to correlate this between two different solutions. And our take uh, in career about this is that there are already neutron plugins and neutron solutions that address this problem. So we are trying in career to expose this uh, to the user. And this is essentially uh, one sentence that says it all about career. We saw all of these problems. And then we realized that we have a networking abstraction already that is relatively mature. It's relatively uh, production grade. It has, uh, it is, there are CIs, there are gate uh, tests for it. There are uh, richness of solutions that are implementing this. Why not use this uh, abstraction, Neutron, uh, OpenStack networking abstraction for our containers workloads just as well. So we have one infrastructure that manages uh, all of our networking in our environment. And this is a quick overview about Courier. So Courier is all about bridging and mapping between all of these new models, all of these new uh, uh, containers world. If it's uh, individual containers like Docker and Rocket, if it's containers orchestration engines like uh, uh, Docker, uh, Docker Swarm, Mesos, and Kubernetes, and we are mapping them to uh, OpenStack uh, networking abstraction Neutron and the networking advanced services. And we are working on both uh, sides, right? There is the, there is the containers uh, communities, but we are also working on the OpenStack side, uh, working on containers-oriented projects like uh, Magnum and Cola, and of course, uh, pushing things to Neutron just as well to enhance and to make this connection uh, much better. And by doing this, we are able to enhance our containers environment with all the richness and flexibility that OpenStack provides. Now, Career is fully open source. Uh, we have a weekly IRC meeting. We are a big tent OpenStack project, so we have a design summit. So you are all uh, invited uh, today to uh, join the session, see our roadmap, our features, and talk with us about everything you want. So a few of the current uh, features that are supported, and Tony and Muhammad will soon go over them in more uh, detail. But we have integration with Docker, uh, with Docker networking and the pluggable IPAM. Uh, seamless integration with Docker uh, Swarm. Uh, being able to attach uh, constructs from containers like networks and subnets to a Neutron uh, resource that are already exist. Uh, and by doing this connection to Neutron, we essentially uh, provide all of Neutron uh, features to containers workloads. So we can have uh, security groups, we can have nothing, we can have port security, quality of service, quota management, all of the richness and flexibility of Neutron, including advanced networking services like Elbus, uh, Firewall as a service, VPN as a service, two containers, and this is important because as the two uh, evolve together, Neutron and containers, we're getting this with zero effort, right? Every new feature, every new thing that is added to Neutron and is tested and is deployed can now be used to our containers uh, workloads. So this uh, was a quick introduction to Career and what we are trying to do. I'll hand over to Mohammed now to show you some of our existing features. Thank you, Gav. So let's have a closer look at Courier and what it is made of. Um, like these are the components of Courier. Like most, if not all, um, OpenStack projects, uh, it has a configuration management module using Oslo config to configure various uh, options for Courier. Courier uses two components of OpenStack right now, Neutron and Keystone. Um, the connection to Neutron is through Neutron client, hopefully OpenStack client, and the authentication is done through Keystone. I will talk about uh, the generic binding in a moment, but at the heart of Courier, we have the modules that you see, the boxes on the left side. Currently, there are two uh, container networking models. One, the 
container network model uh, proposed and put forward by Docker, CNM, and uh, we have the support for that. And uh, another is called container network, um, container network uh, interface. That's a app C project, and that's what um, Kubernetes uses. And that's something that we are working to uh, uh, support and uh, merge, hopefully, in this cycle very soon. Uh, I'm going to, um, Tony is going to talk about uh, integration with Kubernetes and CNI and all that. I'm going to focus on what we have right now in the tree, and that's essentially supporting the Docker uh, networking model. Um, a little bit over a year ago, Docker created LibNetwork as a component that does the networking for its containers. And as Gal mentioned, it turned out that the abstractions or the API uh, is very similar to what uh, Neutron provides. Uh, in last summit and even in a talk uh, earlier yesterday, uh, the mapping, we showed the mapping between CN, um, container network model and uh, Neutron. It is really straightforward in the sense that container network model has the notion of networks, endpoints instead of ports, um, IP address uh, ranges, subnets essentially, and uh, things of that kind. So what we have done in Korea have provided a plugin uh, for Docker networking. One of the things that was added to Docker in various projects, including the networking uh, and storage, was the pluggable architecture, where you could plug your own solution to do the networking for you, to do uh, the storage for you. So we take advantage of that plugin architecture. Uh, we developed a network driver uh, that essentially satisfies all the requests coming from Docker. You'd ask Docker to create something for you that essentially comes to Courier, and Courier satisfies that request by utilizing, what else? Neutron. Uh, in addition to the simple driver for um, the networking, uh, an IPAM, IP address management module was added to um, LibNetwork uh, in Docker. And Courier essentially provides that support as well, again, by utilizing address management that Neutron provides. So everything is realized by using uh, Neutron. So let's get back to the Courier generic binding that I uh, referred to a bit earlier. Um, at the end of the day, when you want to connect your containers to a network, most of the time, how this is done is by creating a pair of virtual interfaces. One end of this pair is in the container namespace, and the other one is kind of connected to your hypervisor networking and plumbing. And there is a bit of work that is required to be done for essentially making the connection to your underlying network. If you are familiar with how things are done in OpenStack with Nova, that's kind of the VIF plug and unplug operation that Nova does before Neutron kind of takes over and uh, process the networking request. So we have a rather straightforward but powerful uh, network binding that um, allows you to do these um, plug and unplug operations for different technologies. Depending on um, what your network Neutron uh, instance is using, you may need to use one of these other binding, uh, one of these binding methods that we have. Right now, we have support for the reference implementations in Neutron, that's OVS and Linux Bridge. Uh, we have support for the open source OVN, Oven, uh, and we have support for Dragonflow, Midonet, and uh, IOWiser. Uh, and it is very straightforward. These are small scripts. If you have a use case of a different type of plug that you need, we can really easily work through it and add that, uh, or at least help you um, uh, to add that to Courier. And both uh, our solutions uh, for uh, Docker and Kubernetes uh, use the same uh, binding methods. So let's get uh, a closer look about how we use this. At the end of the day, you want to take advantage of what Courier is providing. All you need to do is essentially use the native Docker API. Docker provides the networking uh, commands that you can uh, issue. 
all you need to do is specifying uh, is, is to specify the driver that you want to use. As soon as you specify that the driver you want to use for realizing this network request is courier, everything is then handled by courier. The same way you specify the IPAM driver and you specify courier, courier will take care of managing addresses for you. And as soon as you create a network with a Docker network create, which is the native Docker uh, command, you have a network with a, a UUID that you can later on use to start your container on. When you say Docker run, and you specify a particular network, that container uh, is connected to that particular network. And um, that's as simple uh, as it gets. To look at the behind the scenes, when you say Docker network create, we end up creating a neutron network for you. You are not aware of it, you don't need to know about it, but just to see how this thing is implemented. As you can see from last example, um, there is a network created, uh, the name is picked for you. Again, you don't need to worry about these details, but uh, the network is created, a subnet is also created by Neutron, the port is created, and all that. And uh, we use the network tags that were added just in the later stages of um, the Mitaka cycle to Neutron, where you can tag Neutron resources with extra information or metadata to make sure that we keep track of the association between Docker networks and a Neutron network. So looking at the Neutron network here, you know which Docker um, network it corresponds to. Maybe you can mention that you, you added backwards compatibility. Yeah. It's coming up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, another feature that we have is the fact that you can use whatever already exists in Neutron. So if you have an installation that is using Neutron already, it is using Neutron for connecting VMs together, you can use the same network uh, for connecting your containers. So that kind of goes to the team that Neutron is becoming kind of your networking for everything you need to do. It can be containers, virtual machines, bare metals through Ironic, all that. You have a seamless, one single uh, underlying networking uh, infrastructure. So here I, we have an example where we create a Neutron network, and you can assume that you had created it for other reasons. And then when you want to create the Docker network, you just specify the name of the network by passing this option to the Docker runtime, or you can specify the UID. Um, and as soon as you do that, that network that is already existing will be used for the Docker networks that you are creating. And um, also, Courier adds a tag to the net Neutron network resources to identify that Neutron network or subnet as something that it was already existing uh, before Docker was even involved. And that is used to make sure that when you remove your Docker network, that network doesn't get uh, removed because you are using it for other purposes. And um, as I mentioned, we are using Neutron tags, which were essentially uh, added to Neutron in Mitaka. So if you are using Mitaka, uh, this will work just fine. If not, if you're using Liberty, again, things will work fine, but underneath, in the implementation, we won't be able to use tags. So we use the name of the Neutron network to store the Docker ID. So that's a caveat to know if you are using Liberty or earlier, um, Docker uh, Courier will possibly change the name of the uh, network that you are using. So you have to kind of rely on UUID to be consistent across the board. And also, since we don't have the uh, a place to identify this network as an existing resource. Uh, if there is nothing connected to the network and you delete the Docker network, the network in Neutron will be deleted. So considering those two caveats, um, this thing works with earlier releases as well. And um, so you have the Docker on single host and it works. Now you are providing 
uh, multi-node networking, multi-host networking to your system. So you need some way of orchestrating uh, having Dockers on multiple hosts. And Docker Swarm is a clustering method that native to Docker and allows you to essentially use a bunch of nodes that are running Docker daemon to essentially um, distribute the work across those. Um, and the essentially use of courier with Docker Swarm is practically seamless. Nothing really you need to do um, specifically for courier to make it enabled. Because Docker Swarm at the end of the day passes a Docker command to a Docker host, uh, things work seamlessly uh, without any uh, requirement uh, to do anything in uh, anything special for Korea. So you get the clustering also uh, from Docker Swarm uh, for free, practically. And with that, uh, I'm going to pass uh, the mic to uh, Tony to talk about uh, integration with Kubernetes. Thank you. Uh, so just. To, to see a bit how much I need to go into detail. Uh, how many of you have uh, used or have looked a bit into, into Kubernetes? Wow, OK. That's, that's more than I expected. I'm glad to, to see that. All right, so um, once we got uh, Docker Swarm uh, working, we looked a bit at what the other people would want. And as, as the audience in, in the room shows, like a lot of people are uh, setting their eyes on uh, Kubernetes. And, and what's important for us is that uh, we do these integrations in a way that feels native uh, in respect to usage, but that it still respects the principles uh, of OpenStack networking and, and security in general. So uh, we don't want to add uh, vectors of attack if possible. Uh, for any integration, and as much as we can, we're going to avoid that. So to, to be able to do that, and I will go into more detail about the, the structure in the, in the next slide, uh, we have a, a component that watches uh, the Kubernetes API, and that uh, doesn't need to, it can run whatever, and it doesn't need to be set somewhere that is accessible by the tenant, because what it does is just translating uh, the Kubernetes request or the Kubernetes events uh, into, into neutron resources. And that it should be completely transparent uh, to, to the user that you are providing your Kubernetes uh, deployment to. So as uh, Mohammed uh, covered, there is CNI. There is uh, m more than one project that is thinking about integrating with CNI. Uh, and it is not clear yet if our CNI uh, driver for Kubernetes is just going to be the same that we use for everything, or we're going to adapt it to each uh, CNI usage. Uh, but the good thing about it is that since it needs to run on each uh, worker node, it, does, it shouldn't have access to Neutron. So, so that's something that, that we made sure. And it only uh, needs as much access as Nova Compute does to, to, to do the binding. And it uses the, the generic beef binding that, that uh, Mohammed presented. So uh, there is an, a new part, which is policy, uh, which is still being defined by the special inter interest group of networking in, in Kubernetes. We're following that. Uh, probably it's going to be there in 1.3. And what, what it's going to be is something a bit like security groups that uh, allows you to say, I want uh, to enable this uh, policy. So it will change the default from allow everything, which is the current uh, de facto uh, situation, uh, to deny everything for, for that service or that pod. And then um, you know, you're going to be able to say, so allow connections, ingress connections from here or from, from this other uh, network. And we're going to translate that. To, to security groups, and they are going to apply to the to the ports that uh, we create for for the Kubernetes workloads. So, uh, since you're all familiar with it, uh, I don't need to explain a lot about the, the Kubernetes part of it. But there is the the master node, and then there, is, there are the the worker nodes, and I'm going to show that in the demo later. Uh, so the only things that we add are the the CNI driver that needs to be in each node, of course. 
uh, and, uh, and the neutron agents. The, the, the CNI driver uh, is something that you could deploy uh, containerized together with Kubelet. So we could inherit it from Kubelet uh, and make a container out of that that just has our, our binding code, the CNI driver, and the, and the binding library that is, is common to all our uh, work. And then uh, a thing that you can see here is that if you use different namespaces, uh, they will get uh, different networks. And the, the location for these networks is when, when, Courier, uh, sorry, when Raven starts, it automatically sets up a network for the, for the default um, namespace. And when you create namespaces, that's going to, to go find uh, an address pool in, in Neutron that will be configurable, which, which you want to use. And it's just going to take the, the predefined chunks of the subnet pool for the new namespaces that you create. And as you can see here, uh, it, as a difference to other implementations like Canbifano or others, uh, you can have several different networks uh, that will be isolated running on the same worker node. So you, if you have a slash 16 as, as your default size, uh, you're not going to get a slash 24 on each machine. They can be whatever uh, the, the master schedules it to be. Uh, one could, could raise the point, like, it would be nice if uh, the scheduler would, would be able to get extra information to, uh, about networking. Uh, to, to make that, those sort of decisions. We're not there yet, but it, it's something that when we have everything else figured out, we're probably going to tackle. And, and again, so the, this part doesn't change. And the only thing, if you don't run OpenStack now, is you have to have Neutron and Keystone that hopefully you can use Scala for that and deploy it in containers and have everything feeling uh, very native to the environment. So I talked a bit about how we map um, the pod. The pod is, uh, as I said, mapped to a port, and then it, that gets a security group, right? So for the Kubernetes services that are backed with a few uh, pods created by the replication controller, what we, what we did is uh, to see that uh, this, this part here, which is the, the abstract model of, uh, of Kubernetes, looks <laughs> a lot like uh, the, the pools in Neutron. So what we did was just take the, the subnet that, that is defined in the Kubernetes deployment for, for cluster IPs, uh, set that as, as, as the, the subnet that you will use for, for your pools. Uh, so you get a, a VIP, and then the backing, you just add uh, when, the, when the pod starts. It will be detected by Raven, translated into a port creation, and adding that as a member of the pool. So then you could potentially configure um, Raven to use whichever policy you, you think adequate for your, for your load balancing needs. So, you can, so currently we use round robin as a default, but you can imagine that, that you could use really whatever. And when a pod wants to talk to a service of an, on another tier, it will use the, just the, the, the cluster IP, and that will just, just work. The only necessary thing is that the subnet for the, for the pods, for each namespace, uh, be connected in a router with, uh, with a subnet that is used for the VIPs. And, and really, it's, it's as easy as it gets. I'm not going to show this on the demo, because this is just being baked in in our prototype right now. Tony, time check. OK. Yeah, yeah I, I tend to talk too much. Yeah, all right. So we're going to go into, into the demo very soon. Uh, this is the, the nested container uh, solution. So as I said, you can have a, a VM started by Magnum, or you can start it yourself. You don't need to own that, uh, like the tenant doesn't need to. And we can have the, the watcher there. And this machine can be the only one that can access the, the Neutron API and uh, the Kubernetes API, and these machines don't need any kind of access to, to your control plane. So that's a nice feature. So about packaging, yeah. So I, I'm uh, starting to have that each component that we add to Courier, every new uh, merge that we do, is going to generate uh, a container here. Then all the integration uh, for getting those pieces, well, like key, key, uh, Keystone and a neutron is something that, that 
that we should work more on. Uh, if there is somebody from uh, Ubuntu uh, uh, and from uh, Red Hat and really would uh, want to join us and, and, and work on the packaging, just let me know because we have some prototype packages. It's just that we need somebody to own them and hit templates for the Magnum integration. We're going to talk more about that later with the session uh, that we have with Fawad. Uh, and so please join that session and we're going to go more into the nested case and what we use and what not. So currently, uh, the focus before the work sessions that we have today is the CNI and Watcher uh, part because now I have it as a prototype with my team at Midakura uh, and we need to upstream that. Uh, it, it, you can see it, it's open and, and so on, but it's just skipping a bit the reviews, you know. Um, so nested containers, uh, hopefully the, the neutron parts will, will fall uh, very soon and we're gonna be able to deal with that. And then depending on what we decide uh, today in the work sessions and tomorrow, DNS integration, Mesos and so on. So it all depends if you join us and, and, and provide a bit of uh, help and direction into what you want, we're gonna give. So for storage, this is something that was changed very recently. Uh, so people want to do the same that we did for networking in storage, and we're here to help. And, and there is all these projects that, that can provide a lot of value to, to containers. And if you have questions about that, because I don't know anything about storage, you can ask in the Q&A to, to Gal. So we really want you to join. Uh, these are some resources that, that you can get before I go into the demo, because I'm running out of time. Uh, and, and we're, we're gonna post the slides, I'm gonna tweet about that, and yeah, IRC, we're always there, around the clock, so you will always find somebody. And here are very interesting links, you should really check that out, like how to get started with Swarm, uh, how to, to get Kuri running with OVN, and we're gonna post one for the Kubernetes integration very soon. So, live demo time. Uh, I don't know how many of you were in Tokyo, uh, but sometimes the, the courier uh, demos can play nice tricks on you. For added value, I even changed the laptop in the middle of the, of the session, yeah. which is a bit dangerous. Uh, and I have to say, the last night this was not working, yeah. so let's, let's see. <laughs> let's if, not talk too much. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you forget one, one thing to configure. And <laughs> All right, so let's see if I can move that over there. I'm not going to see anything, so let me put display, mirror them. Ah, sorry, uh, mirror. Who is that, the scooter driver, Tony? That's my son. He looks exactly that, like me, same beard, same, <laughs> same, same everything. So. Um, all right, so here I have uh, the dev stack machine that if Mosh is respecting me, yeah, we will see. Um, very well, so here we have uh, the cube master. Uh, can you guys see well or should I make the font bigger? Bigger, right? Okay. Is that right? That, this is even better, right? Okay, so um, we have in this demo setup Kubernetes master, two Kubernetes slaves, and then we have Swarm master, two Swarm slaves, and what I want to show is that we're gonna be able to ping from one to the other. We could also do that from VMs, so that should just work. So let's run, uh, uh, wait, yeah, created, get, we get the pods, we see that they are being created. Okay, we have that running, that's good. Uh, so now in DevStack, what we can do is uh, list the networks. You see here that, that there is a, a Raven. Ah, wait, that's too little, right? right. Um, yeah, so we have the, the Raven default network, as I said. If you added more namespaces, and we had the code to translate that because we still don't have it, uh, you would see networks per, per namespace. And then, uh, in the bottom, you can see some uh, Kudir uh, networks that those are the ones that you can create with Swarm. So let's go to Swarm and let's, ah, oh, well, I can show uh, that there is, 
let's grab it because it's too big, uh, 172.16. So we have um, the port 34 and 35 for these two uh, Nginx containers that we started. So let's go into Swarm. Uh, that's again little, right? Um, so let's create a network called Texas in 10.35. And now this will go and create it uh, into, into one of the Docker engines that gets backed up in the cluster store. So when you do um, Docker network ls, you will see that this Texas uh, network is not namespaced by the node. It's present for all your uh, Swarm deployment. Now we can just uh, run a container uh, on the Texas network, Alpine, uh, just a shell. It, now it takes a while because my VMs are not that fast. <laughs> All right, uh, so we see that the IP that it got, it's one provided by the IPAM that we have in 10.35.0 slash 24. And uh, now it would be the time to ping between them. So for being able to do that, we have to add a router between the two networks, obviously, because otherwise they, they would not be able to talk to each other. So uh, router list. We have the inter router that I pre-created because I always forget the commands. Um, so let's list the networks. Grab, well, I think, yeah. Uh, grab uh, 10.35. Okay, so this is the subnet. Uh, and now we can just do the router addition. Uh, Neutron route. Um, I always forget this. Neutron help <laughs> grab <laughs> router. Yeah, I, I wish I would have put the auto completion. Router interface yeah. at. And now what we want is this. The router. You can use the name. And the network. Subnet. Sorry? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, this, this part I remembered <laughs> because I did it this morning again. So, um, all right, so here we are in the Alpine machine in r running in Swarm. And so just let's try if the demo gods and muses are with me today. Uh, which port did I say was the uh, port list uh, 35, for example? 35. Yay, so it works. <laughs> cool. So if you have any question, feel free to ask any of us uh, now or later, whenever you want. So please go to the microphones and ask any question you have. I guess there is just one microphone on this side. Okay, no. Ah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right. So I came, sorry, let me walk up here. I came in a little late. What is the use case? We are running VMs on OpenStack and then you're running Docker. Uh, on top of those VMs? Was that the intent? Uh, so that is one of the things you can do, and we're going to cover that in, at 11.50 with uh, Fawad in another session. Uh, so the idea is if you want to provide multi-tenancy, uh, Kubernetes doesn't have that right now. OK, OK, I uh, get it So Magnum, for example, or you can do it manually, uh, can create per your tenant a bay, uh, a Kubernetes deployment. Mm -hmm. And you can have containers running there. And what Kudir will allow so, you to do is. So this, this whole theme about using Docker containers and OpenStack together is all about providing the multi tenancy, which uh, you would not be able to do without OpenStack. No, that, that is one aspect. And mm -hmm. it is very important for a lot of operators. The other aspect is that by doing that, you have all your uh, workloads, be it VM uh, and bare metal with Ironic and. Uh, Containers. containers, yeah. So if you've all, uh, if you're you already everything under the same stack. API, mm -hmm. oh, uh, okay, you just want a common API. Yeah, you have a common API. You can use the same vendor for everything. You don't have any lock-in, and so. Yeah, and it, so but, <coughs> but and if it, I have bare metal Kubernetes running, maybe on Core OS or something, is that integrating with any of this? No. Sure, sure. This yeah. this, this this demo is exactly that. Okay. Bare metal. I'm not using CoreOS because I have to make a couple of containers for that still. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but yeah, that's, that's what it's showing. You're going to have your CoreOS, 
uh, running containers. Mm -hmm. And those containers are going to get a neutron port, and you're going to be but able to reason But CoreOS is them. running on VMs in, in OpenStack. You, no, not necessarily. You, okay. can, you can use bare metal. As, oh, long maybe. As, as, as long as you have your neutron agent running there. Oh, you've got to have neutron agent running yeah. on, on those. Yeah. Okay. Depending on the neutron plugin you're using. If it is requiring agents, you will have agents. If not, no. Yeah. Uh, and just one more question quickly. Any plans to do, uh, I guess it's only neutron, if we are using Contrail or some other networking, it, that would not work. Any vendor that integrates. It, it, it will work as well. If yeah. Open Contrail has a plugin for Neutron and they do. Yes, they do, right? Then exactly. it will work seamlessly with Courier. Yeah. They, they, well. they only need to, to integrate with it. So in this cycle, we've had uh, Mohammed adding the Linux bit support. We've had Fawad add the Plum Grid support. Uh, so we really hope the, that other vendors come and, and they, it just like what three lines that you have to add to, to Courier to make your vendor support it in, mm -hmm. in Courier and, yeah, the, and, and the, all the containers. Yeah, the extra work is just to bind the container to your network infrastructure. Okay, I'll come That's by and trivial. talk to you guys yeah. offline. So Essentially, thank any you. Neutron plugin will work. Okay, thank yeah. you. Any more questions? Ah, well, we have one last. Do you have a moment? Yeah. Sure, sure. So, uh, well, so, yeah. I guess if they don't kick us out. I just wanted to ask, in the case where you were attaching to an existing neutron network, when you were kind of mm -hmm. using an, uh, an existing neutron network, so would that be, was, is that for really the swarm case? So basically when you've got Docker instances on multiple VMs, then you want them all to attach to the same neutron network? Or can it also be the same neutron network which you would be using for the VM level? So. Yeah. Yeah, and we demoed that in the last summit. If you go back to the video, we have a VM and, and container connected to the same network talking to each other. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and another. Yeah, you can do that. But and another you, when the container is running on that VM. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You you, you yeah. could have the container running on the yeah. VM, talk to the to the VM. To, uh, to, to, okay. So that works. But that's no. That's when we add the the nested support that we're going to talk later in the other presentation because uh, like yeah. just as, as a little advance. You're going to have a port uh, for, per the container, for, for the container that it will be a support of the port that, that provides for the VM. And they don't need to be on the same network, but you can add a router, or they can be in the same network, and then you just ping between each other. OK, cool. And um, one other question, if there's no one else, and we have time. So um, I'm just wondering, how, how do you think this kind of approach is different from, say, Nova Docker, where you kind of add Docker as an alternative hypervisor within Nova? Or something uh, like that. Because so you don't have to use Nova Docker in the sense you don't have to use VM in terms of sure. performance that has its uh, pitfalls. If you have to, if you are using Nova Docker, then you are kind of running out of VMs. And here, with you, your native containers, you get it up and running in a second. And well, it, it was more that Nova yeah. Docker uh, was just using the the, the Nova API uh, to provide a uh, Docker lifecycle. That is something that, that I actually miss because some people just want to use Nova for, as an API for that. But the difference is that what we're trying to, to give here is that the people that just want to use the, the container native APIs like, like Docker, Rocket, or whatever, they will be able to get access to the, all the wealth sure. of services okay. that, that OpenStack gives you. And, and with Nova, Docker, you had to use the, the Nova lifecycle. So I think I'm, I, so it, it achieves, in a, in a sense, it achieves the same thing in that it allows you to use all of the neutron abstractions yeah. with the Docker yeah. ecosystem, but it's a question of who's ultimately driving the API and driving the lifecycle. Yeah, exactly. It gives okay. you more choice. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So, thank you. Thank okay. you all thank for you. joining.